Hello everyone, it's Stephen Clark and friends here, back with the latest news from Thailand and Southeast Asia. Thailand's Aviation Authority extends ban on flights by another 12 days. Two university students in Thailand tragically end their lives on a bridge in Bangkok. Phuket, Thailand. Hotels ordered to shut their doors. Wuhan residents in China told to stay inside their homes. The Philippines, a plane carrying medical supplies goes down. Rebels kill a New Zealander at Gatsburg Mine in Papua New Guinea. But first up, the Civil Aviation Authority of Thailand extends their ban on flights for another 12 days. The Civil Aviation Authority of Thailand on Monday decided to further extend the ban on passenger flights to the Kingdom from 1am of April 7th until 11.59 of April 18th. The Civil Aviation Authority had originally prohibited all aircraft from entering Thailand for three days from April 4th to the 6th. The move is to try to stop the Chinese coronavirus spreading. The Civil Aviation Authority Director General Chala Sakamanop will allow state or military aircraft from landing emergency landings, technical landings without any passengers disembarking, humanitarian aid, medical relief flights, repatriation flights and cargo aircraft. Passengers en route to Thailand prior to this announcement will be subject to a 14-day quarantine in Thailand. The Rama 8 bridge is a cable stay bridge crossing the Chat Phraya River in Bangkok, Thailand. It's quite an impressive sight when you visit Thailand, but unfortunately it was used by three young girls for another purpose. University students jumped to their death over stress from the Chinese coronavirus. Two university students have died while a third was rescued after the three attempted suicide by jumping off the Rama 8 bridge in Bangkok. The three women decided to jump off the bridge, hoping to end their lives due to stress from Chinese coronavirus. The Metro Police Station was notified of the accident and dispatched a team of medics to the scene. Two women were found drowning under Rama 8 Bridge. Police summoned a rescue boat. The two women aged 20 were taken out of the water, but one died at the scene. The rescue team spent two hours searching for the third woman, whose body was later retrieved from the river. During questioning, the surviving woman told police that the three were cousins. They also studied and lived together in an apartment near the University of the Thai Chamber of Commerce. On April the 3rd, they decided to commit suicide by jumping from the Rama 8 bridge. According to the police, they had been discussing this for quite a few months. The survivor was sent to the Surija Hospital to be tested for Chinese coronavirus as she had a high temperature. Her father said that after the closure of their university for Chinese coronavirus, she had returned to her home. However, she later went back to pay the rent for her apartment and never came back. Over to Phuket, Thailand now for some tragic news for the local industry. All hotels have been ordered to refuse new guests and close as soon as the last guests leave. As confirmed, the numbers of the Chinese coronavirus has been rising to the extent that something has to be done. Guests staying at hotels before the shutdown takes effect are allowed to stay until they check out. After that, those hotels must immediately close their premises. New guests are not allowed. Phuket Governor Pikapong Twipat, who is in charge of the emergency situation in the province, signed the hotel shutdown order. The order applies to all types of hotels and similar places, except those used by state agencies as field hospitals. Temporary medication shelters for people under medical observation are being used to monitor coronavirus situation. Hotels with guests are required to give local officials their names. All guests will be screened and those showing symptoms of suspected Chinese coronavirus infections will be put in quarantine at a place specified by the provincial authority. Those who fail to pay heed to the order would be liable to go to jail for up to one year and or a fine of up to 100,000 Thai baht. Fourth Army Chief Lieutenant General Kwonsak Kunsawat 
said the government was concerned about the Chinese coronavirus situation in Phuket. A curfew had been imposed nationwide, forbidding people to leave their homes from 10pm to 4am. It will be strictly enforced, said Lieutenant General Ponzak Punzawat. We don't want to be like Italy, infection graphs rising. Of all the southern provinces, Phuket has the highest figure. Prime Minister Priyat Chinachat has explained, with deep concern, and has assigned the 4th Army and other agencies to help the Phuket Governor. The Phuket Governor said, People in risk groups were mostly in Bangala area or Patong. Doing what tourists do, I guess. On Soy Bangala, there are six entertainment venues which are in contact with infected people. It is necessary to close the area and put those with symptoms in quarantine for 14 days, the governor said. So not only can the tourists wonder how they can avoid the coronavirus and fly home, now they've got to worry about where they can sleep. Wuhan residents told to stay inside and be vigilant. The Chinese Communist Party stipulated that residents with green health codes can go out. The central Chinese city where the Chinese coronavirus first emerged last year will lift the lockdown on April the 8th, local media reported. The city's top officials from the Chinese Communist Party urged vigilance as authorities sought to ward off a second wave of infections from incoming travellers while also easing some of the stringent containment measures. The Chinese Communist Party has reported more than 81,600 cases of the Chinese coronavirus since the outbreak began, including 3,322 deaths. But the levels of transparency around the figures has been questioned. Until this week, China's National Health Commission was not including people who had tested positive but showed no symptoms in its tally. On Friday, it was reported 31 new confirmed cases, including two local infections. Four people died, all of them in Wuhan. While the number of daily cases have dropped significantly since February, Wang Xingling, Wuhan's Chinese Communist Party chief, said, the risk of rebound in the city's epidemic remains high due to both internal and external risk and it must be contained to maintain prevention and controlled measures. The Chinese Communist Party will hold national mourning on Saturday for 14 martyrs who died from responding to the pandemic. National and foreign embassies and consulate will fly flags at half mast and all public entertainment will stop at 10 a.m. There will be three minutes silence. Li Wingling is among the 14 health workers and police declared to be a martyr for the efforts. The Chinese doctor was reprimanded by authorities for spreading rumours after he sought to warn colleagues about the emergence of the Chinese coronavirus in December. But in March, investigations into his death exonerated Li and recommended the reprimand be withdrawn. Li Wangling died trying to help others and was silenced by the Chinese Communist Party. Johnny Siam reporting, Philippines, Manila, Aquino Airport, Hawaiian Air chartered flight to carry medical supplies, a medical crew and three crew of a patient and his companion. Unfortunately, on runway 24 on takeoff around 8pm on Sunday, the plane burst into flames and all on board were killed the day before this terrible accident. That same aeroplane was used to carry medical supplies to Ilocos de Nort. So obviously something went wrong on the takeoff. Lion Air also has got a bit of a history as the 1st of September 2019, whilst being chartered for a medivac, crashed in Lagana, killing all nine aboard. So something to think about, but they were trying to do the best they could with what they had. The islands have changing weather and some very drastic weather at times, so I dare say there'll be an investigation into how, who, what, when, where and why. Johnny out. Johnny's I am reporting. 
Indonesia, the island of Papua. Rebels again attacked the Grassberg mine. The mine is the world's largest gold mine and also mines copper. So maybe the others want it or whatever, or feel entitled. But rebels attacked. Wounded were two Indonesian workers and unfortunately one New Zealand worker dead. But during the clash, one police officer, one soldier and four insurgents also died. For what? Who knows? But the mine is very, very well secured and the owners will not take kindly to it. So I do think that um, there'll be repercussions from this one. Uh, the mine's not going nowhere and I do believe that they're bringing in some pretty good uh, revenue into Indonesia. So if the rebels have got a problem, maybe they should talk to their own government. Johnny out.